Welcome to a special edition of a Clinton Macomb Journal. I'm in one of the favorite places that I come to as often as I can, the Clinton Macomb District Library, and I'm with the library director, Larry Neal, who also was one of my favorite people because he's always happy, always positive, always welcoming people to use our three facilities in Clinton and Macomb Townships. Larry, there's a very special project that we're gonna talk about today that is coming from the White House that we want to inform all the residents of Clinton Township and Macomb Township because it will affect them and their children and their grandchildren. So first of all, let's talk about the White House Challenge. Okay, well, uh, it's just in April and on a Monday I received this message via email had the White House logo on the top of it, and it said, we would like you to join us for a conference call tomorrow. Please re respond if you're interested in talking about uh, ways that we can help better serve America's children. So I thought, first of all, this is some prank. You know, you're always getting junk email and all of that. Yeah, right. So I started doing some research. I saw who it was from, it confirmed it was a member of the White House staff, and that it was legitimate. So I said, of course. Uh, next day, I joined the conference call and they said we've got a very special project. We've picked 30 libraries from across the country, so, you know, San Francisco, Boston, New York, Clinton Macomb, and uh, we are working on a program to get every child in the country a library card, and we're looking for some of the leading libraries in the country who we want to participate in pilot projects, figure it out talk to each other about strategies for making this happen, and then using that as examples for other libraries around the country. Now it's really appropriate, we're on the second floor of the library, in the main branch, which is at Romeo, Plank, and Canal Roads, and this is basically magazines and the children's section, where I spent a lot of time with my grandkids, who are now <laughs> three and five. This is one of their favorite places to come. Well, we love that. You know, we want kids to come here. We want parents to bring them as soon as they're able to, uh, to come to the library, to get that routine into your family. So it's great you've got your grandkids here, if you've got your kids, if you've got neighbor kids. Uh, coming to the library just for the joy of reading, being here, um, experiencing life in society. Sometimes kids get very excited about using the elevator here and it's all about how kids learn how to behave in a public space and then getting that love of reading and the, the fundamental skills that they need for, for life. Well, you've branched out, not do you just have books here, but you now have a special area for people who are blind. You have a special historical area named after our good friend Don Green. You have many different things that most libraries don't have. Well, it's lucky, you know, when you have success and it just builds and people recognize you as a, a hub of the community, uh, we're here for lifelong learning and we're here for everyone in the community. So whether a person has a visual impairment or not, or at some point has one, it's, you know, anybody can acquire a disability at any point in life. We want them to feel at home here that, so if they have that need at some point or they know a family member that could benefit from it, hey, it's at their favorite place at the library, so get a book for my kids, and I can help maybe that parent who just is dealing with macular degeneration, so. Now, one of the things that probably prompted the phone call to you is you're very active with your national group. In fact, aren't you the president of the National Library Association? I, I am. I was elected two years ago to be the president of the Public Library Association. Uh, we have 9,000 members across the country and internationally. Uh, it's a volunteer position and it's one year, so uh, it does really put our library and me in the spotlight. It's a career highlight, but it brings opportunity to us. Uh, right. I get the best of ideas from around the country. I'm talking to people thinking about the future of libraries, how can we always do better, uh, and always bring it back home because that's really what it's ultimately about. How can we make this the best possible library for our residents here in Clinton Township and Macomb Township? Well, you are lucky because you have a great library board. Part of that board is appointed by the Clinton Township Board of Trustees, and the other part is appointed by Janet Dunn and her board in Macomb Township. And by the way, they have been very supportive. Janet is a wonderful library supporter. I can't say enough good things about her and her board. Well, that's where it begins for us. It's the support from the township boards. They, as you said, they appoint our board, they're governing, they manage our budget, they hire me, uh, and they're here to give the best library service possible back to the community. You know, you've really got a great partnership here, which is voluntary. You know, you were very, very visionary many, many, so many years ago, over 23 years ago, to form a district library, which is two municipalities that could go off, do their own thing, but instead you bring your resources together and you get something stronger. Uh, Much the, stronger. The sum is, of the parts is greater than the whole, so. Uh, 
Okay, now let's talk about other volunteers here. You have your your board is volunteer. They don't get paid ten cents, but you have a lot of other volunteers that have been very active and supportive from the very beginning, back when we started at Erie Elementary School. <laughs> right. Well, uh, we have two two categories, if you will. We have library volunteers that work directly for the staff, and they do everything from uh, we have Macomb Academy. Uh, they do all the fine cleaning work of the uh, beautiful woodwork in this building. Uh, we have volunteers that help keep the shelves in order, water the plants, uh, so many ways they help us out. And then we have the Friends of the Clinton Macomb Public Library. Uh, they were instrumental in getting funding for the library, building the awareness of what the library could be. And today most people know them by the book sales, the big ones yep. that we have in the spring and the fall, but at the main building we have the used book nook, and then we also have uh, perpetual book sales at the two branch buildings too. So if you want a you know, cheap read to take to the beach that you might be worried about getting wet, you, know, you go down and get it for a buck or two, and oh. then the money comes back to the friends and then they give it to the library. Uh, they just gave us $50,000 that will underwrite all programming for 2015 and 16. So concerts, summer reading programs, lectures, uh, all those great things uh, that's all funded by the Friends of the Library. So this is just another great volunteer opportunity for the residents of Clinton and Macomb Township if you are interested. Oh absolutely we always can use new volunteers our book nook especially is looking for people uh, have fun you can sit and uh, we you know, will have a couple people working there but you also are an ambassador to the library because people are going to see you there and then they'll have questions and so they may need help with the copier or where to find something and our volunteers really are uh, just as important of a face uh, when you're coming into the library as our staff members are. Sure so and they know, they know people that. that are coming in the, in the building in any way. Oh, well, absolutely. I mean, it's all about community and uh, a great way to see your neighbors and, yep. and uh, people from around uh, all over, too. So, One of the other things that I notice when I'm here is there is no way to stereotype who comes. You have young, old, in between. You have <laughs> traditional families. You have untraditional families. You have virtually everybody coming here. And if you look at the parking lot as you drive by, you're almost always full. Yeah. Uh, that, that's an issue we will be taking a look at. Our, our spaces do uh, often fill up and uh, you're right, it's uh, a great joy for me when I have uh, uh, an elected official such as yourself. I had a lot of meetings with them in our boardroom and I always sit them on the side where they can look out the window because when you get that perspective you get to watch right. the sidewalks and it is, it's every configuration, it's every age, it's every background, it it's every type of attire. Uh, that's what I love about the library world. It's the one, one of the few last places in society that's a civil place where people can gather, uh, learn about each other, have those discussions, and really still have a sense of connected community. Uh, you know, electronics gives us many, many opportunities to connect with other people, but this is still a physical place where you actually can see and bump into your neighbors. And the other great thing is that we're not selling you anything either. So the, you know, you're, you're not going to uh, walk out with your wallet any uh, lighter. You can come here. Everything is free. Our programs are all free. So it's uh, free of charge, I should say. There is a cost to providing that. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, you want to take out 10 items, that's great. If you're, you know, let your kid go make the decision. Wander the shelves and discover things. Uh, you know, we're here right in the height of summer, which is one of my that's favorite it. times of years with kids. Uh, they no longer have to you know, go with reading lists or worrying about how many points something is. It's sort of just go explore and, and find things that may be of interest to you. And uh, we have all of our librarians that are all professionally trained and they're here just to get you what you're looking for. So if you can't find something, ask. You know, oh, that's yes. why they're here. Exactly. Last night our township board approved a sign that you want to put up out front. Tell us about the sign and what it's hopeful to do. Okay, well we're really here to promote summer reading. Uh, I can't tell you how important it is that uh, kids read over the summer. It's, uh, we call it the summer slide and uh, we, if, if kids don't read, if they're just engaged in other things or, or just you know, watching TV or whatever, uh, they can lose their reading skills. So when they go back in the fall, then they're not at the same level they were when they finished in the spring. So our goal is to get them to read six books. And it's not a really high threshold to uh, accomplish. If they do that, studies have shown that they maintain that level of reading. And again, let them select things that are of their own interest and, and find uh, you know, maybe a new series that they'll get uh, hooked on. But uh, if we can 
keep them engaged in that, then they maintain reading level. And it's really a full a, a program for the whole family. So we have lots and lots of teens that come in now. Uh, if they participate and complete that program, at the end of the summer they get to stay here for an after hours Friday evening program. But the, the activities are marvelous. I'm so envious they didn't have that when I was uh, growing up. But uh, it's a great reward for them to stay engaged in the program. Yeah. And we want families, so there are, are great prizes for adults too, because if kids see their parents reading or they read to their kids, then they can have these discussions about what they read. And it's, it's all helping to keep that uh, reading level up. Okay, now if someone wants to get information, they can either come here to the library or can they go online? Yeah, we've got a website, uh, it's cmpl.org. Uh, it's all there. You can register online and do your reading log and all of that. Still need to come here to get your prizes. So after you complete different levels, uh, you get to come to the library. And well, it's not hard uh, to get people to come to the library. First of all, you have three <laughs> branches. You have the very beautiful main branch here in the middle of Clinton Township. You have the south branch and the north branch. And I know that each one of those is very important to you and your staff. Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, if you've not been to the new South Branch, and I'm still calling it new even though we're going to yeah. celebrate one year of being open on uh, June 22nd, uh, it's uh, a magnificent building and there's some great artwork in there by Pyro Art Glass Studio that was paid for by the friends of the library. So if you need a little uh, outing or a, a vacation, if uh, you want to do it within the confines of our own library district and you've not been there, it's at 15 and a half mile in Gratiot. It's a beautiful new Very, branch. very nice building. It's very visible on Gratiot Avenue, a big part of our DDA district now. And good news is that the shopping center next door, the movie theater, they're all going to put millions of dollars into their facility, so it's going to make your neighbors over there look even better. Oh, that's, that's marvelous. It's great to see the area revitalize, and again, for the library to be part of the hub of that as a, a center of the community, and we're there. We own the building now, so we're there for the long haul. Very good. Let's get back to the President's Challenge. Tell us about <laughs> it and what your goal is, and I've heard you talk about this before this even came up, is how do we get younger children library cars so that when their teacher walks them down from the neighborhood grade school, they can check the books out themselves. Right. Well, the, the goal of the program is uh, multiple fold. The, uh, the primary goal is to get every child a library card, and that's in one sense or another. It may not necessarily even be a physical card. It's uh, many students have a student ID, so we're going to look at options where they might be able to use their student ID until they come in and actually get a physical card. It really, we have to work with the school districts to figure out the logistics, but the goal is for every student in our service area to have access to the library. And that's coming in to be able to check out with their card, and it's also to access all of our resources that we have through our website. Uh, we have this whole vast set of resources that uh, it's been a challenge sometimes to get marketed to parents to understand, and even teachers, what we have. One easy example is uh, live homework help. So between 4 p.m. and 11 p.m., if a student has uh, an algebra question, a science question, maybe a subject that the parent hasn't had to deal with or doesn't know much about, they can actually use their library card, get connected to wow. a paid, educated tutor who will work with the student on a 20-minute session. When you say paid, the library pays it, not the student who's <laughs> right. calling. Free of charge for the student, the library uh, provides the contract. That's one of your services. It is, exactly. Uh, many other sorts of things that kids use encyclopedias online and again it's not commercial information this is all professionally um, curated we pay subscriptions to companies to provide it and then it's access uh, accessible to the kids That's with great. Their That's library a card great feature okay so now your goal is to have every child first of all in the Chippewa Valley schools and the Clintondale schools because those are wholly within your boundary area to start with right and that's going to start in the fall? Well, our goal is to yeah, roll it out in the fall. So we actually have our first meeting with Chippewa Valley tomorrow, and we'll be meeting with uh, Clintondale shortly. Uh, but between those two districts, that'll be about 20,000 students that we'll cover. But we also have parts of four other school districts. So um, my thought was we will work with these two districts first, get stuff up and running, and that's a huge 
uh, percentage of our students. And then uh, I've already reached out to some of my neighboring libraries to see if we can together uh, approach those school districts. Also, you would go to Frazier and then take the right. Frazier kids and the, the Clinton Township kids who go to the Frazier schools. Yes. Okay, good. So that way, then we can make it somewhat seamless so that then we're hitting everybody in that school district. Because so you've, you've got New Haven, Frazier, yep. Lance Cruz, mm -hmm. Utica. Utica, I forgot about Utica. So, yeah. It's, uh, and then we have private schools, and then we have many people that homeschool within the community too. So our goal is to capture everybody um, to get kids that card. Uh, you know, the, Bob, there was a recent study by Pew that showed that up to 60% of low-income children did not have library cards, and therefore they didn't have the same access to the resources that their peers did. And so in particular for us, that, that will be a, a target area to make sure that we really not only get that access to the kids, but then to understand the importance of that and to get them using it. How long do you think it's going to take to get the first 20,000 on board? <laughs> well, uh, again, we're going to set the timetable with the schools, uh, but my goal is to have everybody by the end of the next school year in the entire district uh, oh, that's completed. Good. Yeah, it's pretty ambitious, but I think it's achievable. And the longer we wait, the, the, the opportunity is exactly. being missed. Exactly. And are you going to start at the kindergarten level and go all the way through the seniors in high school? Oh, yeah, it'll be all ages, absolutely. And then we hope that that will inspire, um, you know, we work with many, many preschoolers, preschools, so again, you know, we have, you know, even baby's first library card, that connection, while, you know, your baby may not be bringing the card in, <laughs> he may not have a wallet for your baby, still the notion and the concept that you're making that connection, that a library card is important, it's access to the world, and it's something that you need to, for success in life is, is the message. You know, you said there were about 30 libraries throughout the whole country that were selected, and you are one of those, and I'm very proud of that, too. Are there any others in Michigan that were selected? Uh, <clears throat> Rochester Hills. No. Well, no, that doesn't surprise <laughs> me, because Rochester Hills has a librarian that we both know very well. Yes, uh, she was my mentor. I worked with her for 17 years. Uh, when she was recruited to come here, I was uh, brought over as her number two. So uh, we still have a lot of connections. This building was designed and constructed by the same firm as the Rochester Hills Library. Uh, Christine likes to refer the, to this as uh, the 2.0 version of the Rochester Hills Library, although they continue to uh, upgrade and enhance that facility. So we both, uh, I think, share ideas back and forth, and, and ultimately both communities benefit by that, that sharing of ideas and inspiration. So it's really nice to be in great company uh, for oh, yes. that honor. It is, and I, I was real happy when I, I knew that she was the other one in, in the state, <laughs> obviously, but it, it is nice to have people that have brought success to your community go on and have other successes in other areas too. Absolutely. Well, what we've tried to do today is to show you what your library is all about, where the library is going, and also to kind of showcase the guy that's in charge of the library system. He does a wonderful job, and Larry, I'm looking forward to the day that every child in Clinton Township and Macomb Township has their own library card and uses that library card on a regular basis. Well, thanks, Bob. We appreciate your support because getting the word out is incredibly supportive. And again, support from you and Janet is critical and the, both of the boards and, and township officials. You set an example in many ways. So thank you for that support. It's our, it's our and pleasure. go out and get your library cards. <laughs> and thank you for joining us today on the Clinton Macomb Journal. We'll see you next time.